if if I have a desire to have sex outside of my marriage, that is still perversion. Like you're, all you're, perversion. You're talking wait, wait, no, wait, wait, no. Okay, you're cutting me off again, bro. Oh, mm-hmm. you're cutting me off again. All perversion is is operating outside its original intent. That's not what right? the Bible and says. So, that's not what that, the Bible that, says. That, the little, Bible, little, Leviticus wait, 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 20, wait, 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 says wait, wait, if a wait, man wait, wait, lies wait, with another wait. man, it's abomination to God. It don't say anywhere that if a man lies right. with a woman, it's an abomination. But, it makes but, that but, distinction but, but, for but, but, a reason. Listen, listen, You're not Marcus, talking Marcus, Bible right now. Marcus, Marcus, the only reason, the only reason, the only reason why I'm telling you that that that, that your videos are dangerous, bro. Th- hear me out. Hear me out. You said that like 10 times. You're not answering the question. Well, let me explain, bro. Let me explain. The reason why I asked you what is sanctification is because if somebody has been delivered from from whatever, homosexuality, fornication, uh, alcoholism, there is a process. There is a process in which they go through. You don't even know, like you don't, you don't, you don't even, you don't even know my wife and you don't know other people like my wife. I was friends with her. Mm-hmm. When she was when, when, wait, 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 but before we even got married, we, we I was friends with her. I've seen this woman be, be be become sanctified over the years, and so but, but you're making you you're you're making like definite claims about our character. No, you your wife, know. your you wife, wait, wait, let me, let your explain, wife bro. said she still struggles with same sex attraction. Did let me, not? Let me, let, let me, let Did me, she let say me that? Yes or no? Bro, listen, listen to me, bro. Did she say that? Bro, can you can you let me can you let me finish? It's not because it sounds like you're just trying to manipulate bro, the conversation. Bro, okay, I'm gonna end the conversation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the conversation, bro, because you won't you won't you won't you won't even let me you won't even let me get a word. Hey, 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 hey! My name is Dan Daniela, and today's topic is somewhere, somehow, in the bucket of faith, spirituality, religion. And I'm going to be talking about just three different conversations between those who say that they believe in faith that were public to people on online. And for those who follow Christian content or follow content about the Bible or find interest in it, and they have come across any of these different scenarios, I would love for your feedback. The reason why I decided to create this video is because I'm in therapy. Congratulations to me. I'm in therapy. Okay. And I have found myself level up when it comes to consuming content like this. What do I mean? Well, boys and girls, friends, children of the world. I used to be so irritated and so confused and so distraught, okay? It used to be so devastating that people who claim a faith, a belief system that's aligned to a God of the Bible would get online or not even online, just get in life and find reasons to judge people and make it seem like they had all of the answers and the definitive truth. It used to cause so much confusion and it used to give me a headache. And I used to think, what in the world? Like how in the world? Boom, boom, bam. But, but now I have seen about three different engagements of people who say that they believe in a faith and I actually consumed it and well not the one one of them I didn't consume as much because it I don't know I don't know what was happening but I'll just I'll share them the the three conversations in the few but I consumed them and I was not as triggered or as bothered or irritated as I have been in the past now here's the thing about therapy and theology all mixing into all the things is I had to figure out why I was so triggered when people believed that believed in the faith and they just wanted to to kind of get online and say you know what this content creator they're leaving you astray because they're telling you this is the doctrine and it's not I would be going back to the Bible and I would find all of these scriptures about, you know, not disputing with one another, of using godly conversation, edifying one another, being a by the Christ, being one mind, being in agreement. And I wanna note that maybe there's more context, right? Maybe there's a chapter I need to read to give me more understanding on why in these cases, in these scenarios, that love looks different. If we look at love and we look at love and um, the chapter in Corinthians that breaks down what love is, we have some understanding that there's patience and there's long suffering. And so this is where I would just input that 
and and to some of these conversations and saying that there is no patience and there is no long suffering and there could be correction there could be rebukeness but what about the balance of it all because if i was to imagine being someone in the world and someone came and corrected me or called me a name or or all the things how does that lead me to god I'm, I'm just one of those people where if you want to correct me, I'm going to receive the correction, but only if your correction is coming with a solution and if that solution aligns with what I know and believe and understand in the Bible. That's how I would receive it. I am for correction. But when I watch some of this content, this is in the past because y'all, I've been to therapy. When I watch some of this content, y'all, I used to think like, what's the point? Y'all look the exact same as people in the world. And then I would think about the book of Ecclesiastes and how none of the things matter. Okay, none of the things were mattering. These people who decide to be good and these people who decided to be bad, they all die. That's pretty sad, right? But if, if it's not for the very end, when it says, fear God and keep his commandments, that's the conclusion of it all. I probably would be like, mm-mm. Okay, but there are moments when I'm reading the Bible where it all makes sense just with something very simple, something simplified. And so these are what I want to offer to those who also saw themselves in confusion or for, for those who who look at godly content or so-called godly content or Christian creators or Christian content creators who lead with a lot of dispute and judgment and rebuke that it's okay to study your Bible. It's okay to even see this out loud because there's an opportunity in this. It's an opportunity for us to review this content and to notice where we need to strengthen our relationship with God, know God's voice, know his word for ourselves, have a relationship and pray because then you'll be able to read the answers when you see this type of behavior. On the other side is this type of behavior doesn't make these people less than because everyone has a place. Everyone has a place where they have a particular audience. What I mean by that is, although some of these content, and it's more than some of the people that I, that I put on the, um, the little thumb, th the little thumb tag, the, the thumbnail, it's more than them that come out onto YouTube and they, and they do all of the things. But I had to realize that the character of God and how I saw, see the character of God demonstrated in the scriptures would, would still love, still rebuke, and still apply consequences where they need to be. And it's not up to me to say like, you guys need to get the fruit of the spirit. What in the world? Y'all need to get the fruit of the spirit. It's not up to me. It's, it's really up to me to be responsible for my own relationship with God to make sure that I am showing the fruit and that I'm showing that there is another choice when you get into the scripture. There is a choice for you to pursue peace, okay? When you look into the Bible, you can choose to be judgmental. Yes, you can choose to be um, a harsh, how it is, person. And it's fine because some people do need that. So let that audience have it. But there's also a choice to demonstrate love because maybe there's more power when, when there's the two greatest commandments, loving God with all your heart, your mind, and soul, and then loving your neighbor as yourself. And I know we all look at love differently, but what if we chose to love like the scripture showed us to? So here's what I want to share with anyone who finds themselves disconnected or confused or irritated by the way so-called Christians or so-called people who believe in a faith or believe in a God act towards you or other people, especially if you look at their behavior and you think, oh, that's not God-like, that's not Christ-like. Well, everyone is here developing. And so you have to look at it from a long suffering perspective. You have to have patience with these people who may have, have a zeal for God. And so they are going to reach an audience that need that type of zeal because they know exactly what God delivered them from. So they might have this extreme zeal that ends up feeling like judgment, but they're just so excited and passionate and they believe that they have it all right. Have patience with them. Learn that they are also in this journey practicing like we all are and so there might be something in, in my world that I feel like yeah I'm not going to sit there and call someone a name in order to prove my point about their misbehavior I'm going to look at the content of their behavior and ask them if they believe in the scripture share that with them and if they don't that's not my power that's that's a take that I would say 
But maybe other people don't have that objective. Maybe their objective is to just go hard and to, to find fault and to believe that their truth is the truth and confuse people. I don't believe that this is all a problem. I think what it should do is inspire all of us to get back into our word and see where we can choose to activate in the fruits of the spirit. So when we look at the fruits of the spirit, and you know what's so interesting about the fruits of the spirit is we're supposed to know people by their fruit. We're supposed to be able to just identify oh, that person has to be rocking with God. And some people might think, well, it's because I'm out here and I'm rebuking all of the sin. But what I would just assume, and this is a theory, that if people operated in love more and operate in the fruit of the spirit more, and I think that might be the key part, they have to be sincere in doing it or practice being sincere in it, getting rid of, of, their, of their personal issues with getting closer to God with prayer. But if they sincerely are operating the fruits of the spirit, this is supposed to overcome so-called evil, overcome the bad. We should be able to say, we can clearly identify that these people are of God. Part of me was inspired to, to get on to YouTube and share my perspective by my confusion, by my journeying and exploration of who had the right answers. And so I understand why I come across a lot of content that is very contrary to what I see in the Bible. I know why I come across content that disputes a lot and, and I understand why I come across it based off of the algorithm. It's going to send you the content that most people are fed on. My video today is not about calling out these three different group of people and saying that they did something wrong. I did some work on myself, y'all, that was intentional about understanding my triggers and what irritated me. And my theory is that a lot of us are triggered and irritated by things for a particular reason. And that could be the thing that is supposed to inspire us to be that in the world, whatever solution it is. So if we are angry about something, how are we going to provide value? And the value could be exactly what how you think it should be done. So like, for instance, when people are upset about the church and people say that the church is this and the church has done that, I would be more interested in how do you design the best church for you? What do you expect? And will you be willing to provide that to the community, even if it's your smaller community? Will you be interested in just showing the fruits of the spirit on your own accord? Are you willing to be a leader, even though it seems like we live in a world where there is so much chaos, where there is a lot of darkness? Are you willing to be a light so that people can still see that it exists? Do you believe that it exists? Because if you don't believe that it can exist, then that's going to really take you out of the lineup because it starts with the faith and it starts with the belief system, which is really tricky and I'm working through this, but it's very tricky when we have a faith and belief system because anyone can really gravitate to a thought, an idea that they believe is so true and, and they could be so zealous about it to the point where they are causing harm to other people. And so this is why this topic is so sensitive to me is because this could potentially cause harm to people mentally it can, because of the confusion and maybe they're, they're on a fence because we really are looking for God being shown through people. Like being the body of Christ, we should be able to see that there's a group of people who are supposed to have light in this world. And so the harm could be done when this these very arguments and disputes could be the very stumbling block. But, 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 but I have to say, there is really no way that we can control everybody's situation. We can't control what we think people should do outside of your world. You can control what you do and what behavior you have. Why am I so passionate and getting so loud? Calm down, okay? I'm passionate and I'm inspired because I've been, I've been at this, y'all. I've been at this whole, I've been so interested in these topics about faith and all the things because it's so interesting. It's so interesting. So like, let's talk about it all day, all night, okay? But I am inspired by these situations now. And it's not something that confuses me because relationship, right? My primary relationship is I believe in a God. I believe in a God of the Bible. And I also still have questions. But now, because Christ is my foundation and my root, I know that there's a Bible I can use there is a journal I can use and I can write down my questions 
and I can interact with the Bible. And that helped me. For some people, it might not be opening up the Bible. It might not be journaling. And I, I, I don't know what to do with that. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do with it. But for those who want to genuinely, genuinely start creating and building a relationship and becoming a friend of God, there's things about friendship that we know in our everyday life that's important. There's something that we would know about our friend because of the interactions that we have with them, the questions that we have with them, the experiences that we have with them, that we know for sure my friend would 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 do this or my friend wouldn't do that. When I think about the relationship that we're building with God, there is an interaction and experiences that I'm having where I understand like, mm, I, I see it. I see in the Bible where we can be going at it with one another and saying, ah, okay. But I also see examples and demonstrations of love. And I, I love, I love, love, love where Christ shows us this balance between correction and love when we all, or maybe we all don't know, I don't know who's watching this right now, but there's a story in the Bible and there's all these people and they're like, stone that person, stone that woman, you know? And then Christ comes in in between, like the mediator comes in between and says, and has a question, right? And the question is, who is without sin? Let that person throw the first stone, right? And so everybody's like, put our stones down because we're not without sin. And so here, it's it's so crazy to me. And it's so crazy to me because I I am, I have this assumption that everyone knows that who, who who's out here judging, right? That they know, one, this story, and two, that they are not without sin. I'm like, don't y'all all know that? Don't y'all all know that? Y'all like it. Y'all like it? Okay, y'all like it, right? But anyway, the balance in this story is that there's protection. Jesus is protecting this woman. This woman did something wrong. But then after the protection and the love, he doesn't turn around and say, you know what? I'm going to be the one to beat you up and, and tell you how it is. It's like, don't send no more. Let it be that. Like, do you see that the love that I use to the compassion that I use? Like, is that enough for you to not desire this anymore. And so to the point of those who are out here, I mean, cause some of the sin, none of us want, I mean, right now in this year, I think we've all come across some news and some content where that is some, some crazy sin, right? We're, my point and my objective is not about these obvious cases of like mistreating one another uh, where we're like, oh, just let them mistreat them. I'm thinking about some of these conversations that people are having is, it's, uh, how do I say this without not being wrong? Okay. It's not that they're small, but it's, it, it's things where it doesn't necessarily mean that they are evil people and that they are without compassion from God. So the point that I want to make is before we start to go in and we lead with being irritated by these people or finding fault and judgment into people is to go into our own self-discovery and have those questions for ourselves. If we are not without sin, what are some creative ways, some impactful ways we can work on that with ourselves and then attempt to apply that with the people be around us? It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to have a poster child in order to minister. So when I say a poster child, some people, because of the Christian content, creation and things like that, they'll pick someone with a name and they'll use them for their videos versus just sharing their content. And the purpose of that is they believe that it's going to bring them more view visibility because no one's really going to listen to them in their Bible study. But that's okay. I see, I don't limit God. I know that I come on my channel and it's probably like five people to 30 people that might watch a video, but that's a lot to me. And I have no idea what the conversion rate is on that person just considering another thought or perspective or even tackling with whatever issue they have and opening up their own Bible and having questions for themselves. Cause that's really what I would love to communicate to anyone is have a conversation with yourself or why you think these things are triggered and keep going back. Cause I know that we live in a world that's uncomfortable. And I know that be being someone who follows God and, and follow Christ is, is probably not ideal, okay? I was just going through this conversation earlier today with someone. I was pointing out a lot of things, a lot of scriptures where it don't seem cute. Like I don't want Satan going around like a lion looking to devour me, right? I don't want to have the type of language that's used in the Bible towards someone who has faith in Christ. But even though I know that this there, I choose to interact with God and have questions on what about these other scriptures? What do you mean when you say 
for CPs. I know you're going to hear that a lot here. But what does that mean? Because you'll have another scripture that says that you didn't come here for peace. So this is about context. It's about reading the entire chapter. This is about prayer and understanding. And it's fun. But that's all that I have today. I just wanted to start here, have a conversation, know that if you are confused, there there are solutions. And, and going back to these three conversations of the people that I put on my poster child or my thumbnail is that this is not to bash them, but this is to use this as an example that you're going to come across people who might not get it right. But remember that you are still working and practicing to get it right. Until next time, hold on to you as much as you can. Hold on to your health, your well-being, and your mind. Be mindful. Bye.